Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. My name is Gabby Snyder, and I'm finally joined by the best co-caster I've ever had the pleasure to work with, Gimli. And also, Lou is here, too. Lou, welcome back. How's it going? <laughs> Trapped in a little tiny box, but my popular demand, the Elgato of the hour, is on screen. Being the main co-caster, I think he deserves a little bit of the big screen time for today. And it's been a fabulous stream so far. We've had three amazing matches, and I'm looking forward to a fourth one. Uh, me too. And shout outs to Elgato, not only for being adorable and taking a nap, but for being the fantastic sponsor of the World Cup. Uh, the Wave 3, a fantastic mic. Uh, looks, look at, see, Gimli's even waking up to say, like, yes, I approve of this mic. You know, I, I love their lights. That's what I'm using right now to make <laughs> me look awake for once. So thank you, Elgato, and thank you, Gimli. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this upcoming match. It will be our last match of the day. Day, and it's going to be Poland versus Argentina. So I'm super hyped to see how this one's going to play out. Yeah, so am I. Gimli, however, I think needs to wake up a little bit, but I'm sure as the games <laughs> start to begin, he will get very, very excited. It's been a long day of commentary for him. He is just a cat. It can be quite taxing, I think, sometimes. We got to get him entered into one of these uh, tournaments again. I know that I've seen Gimli play some pretty intense VGC games. Uh, maybe not for the World Cup. Unfortunately, I don't know what country a cat would compete in. I guess all countries, because cats are a global phenomenon. But yeah, they know, have their own squad. Cat squad rides up. Yeah, you know, I think I'm putting too much thought into this. I, I think we should just move on before um, I start trying to found a nation of only of cats, uh, <laughs> which would be fun. And they could possibly compete in group two alongside of Canada, China, Argentina and Poland. Uh yeah, it could happen. Come back next could. year, maybe. I mean, stranger <laughs> things have happened in Pokemon, let's be honest. I think an army of Incineroar um, is, you know, warranted. It, it's a very popular VGC Pokemon. Um, sadly, you're not allowed more than one on a team. Um, but, you know, it could happen that cats can, you know, do many things. But focusing back onto Group 2, there's certainly a lot of amazing matches here. Um, two teams in particular that I was very excited to look forward to seeing uh, was China in particular, but Argentina as well has given out some phenomenal Pokemon. Pokemon play um, and it's certainly one of the regions to keep an eye on yeah, and for me personally, I'm really excited to see Team Poland play it out. Um, I am a Polish uh, pretty significantly on one side of my family, so you got to root for those hometown heroes. And um, it looks like there haven't been that many games played out so far between Poland and Argentina, as uh, Poland has a two-game win, winning both games 2-1, to one, uh, but still many games to be played out. And I, I love these teams so far. I mean, I see Eternatus, I see Ho. Oh, I see uh, Don Wings Necrozma. Like, this is a really good variety of Pokemon. Yeah, I only see one Reggie Alecki, but you know, at least it's there, it's representing. Um, but I think, again, it's it's interesting, Poland are kind of pulling ahead here to a no, so it really is up to Argentina in this match to kind of put a mark on that scoreboard, stop keeping it at kind of nil point, as it were. Um, and again, interesting looking at some of these teams. Again, lots of Rillaboom coming around, but I really like um, on Philippe's side, having that Suncor um, of Torkoal and Lilligan. I know a lot of people don't like it. I love it. Um, and again, to see Mian Xiao come to the forefront of Pokemon that I think is super Super nice in series 10. Yeah, so for today's match, we'll be featuring Bartos versus Juan, and uh, as we saw in the uh, in interstitial, I'll call it, between rounds, uh, Bartos is running a fairly standard team. We got another Reggie Alecki on the board for you, Lou, though, uh, by special <laughs> request, I'm sure. Uh, but it's going to be that Zashin joined by Incineroar, Tapu Fini, uh, Lander Astherian, and Amoongus uh, composing his team. So a pretty, pretty standard support Zashin team. You got some interesting cores there with the Incineroar Feeny and Amoongus. And, uh, you know, I think the Tapu Feeny is especially interesting because it really dropped off in usage for a while because of Reggie Alecki of all Pokemon. Mm. Yeah, it certainly did. And also having Rillaboom being able to come in and set the terrain and have that priority glassy glide does give a lot of issues for Tappy Finney. But again, Tappy Finney will allow that terrain control. So it is a little bit risky switching it in when there's a Rillaboom on the field. But if you can override that terrain, it can certainly be advantageous. For me, though, I want to see what this Landris is up to. It was a Pokemon I really pipped coming into Season 10. And I just haven't seen it being used to its full potential yet. I haven't seen it being the star of the show as it was. So it's going to be interesting in this matchup if Bartosz has the utility to bring it and whether it can shine. 
Yeah, on Juan's side of the field, though, representing Team Argentina, it's going to be Kyogre as the restricted Pokemon of choice with support from Incineroar, Rillaboom, Amoongus, Zapdos, and Mimikyu. So a lot of the familiar friends I think Kyogre is known to hang out with with the Incineroar, Rillaboom, and the Amoongus. Uh, but Zapdos and Mimikyu are certainly a interesting pick. Zapdos being a bulkier electric-type Pokemon does still does get access to some nice type coverage with uh, flying, fire, and electric type attacks. And uh, that Mimikyu is an interesting pick as well, especially up against the Zacian team. You have to be wondering if it has access to Will-O-Wisp to try and lower Zacian's attack. Uh, could also have access to Trick Room for speed control. So I'm really curious to see more information about Juan's team because it's going to be a very exciting matchup. It certainly is. And of course, in a closed team sheet format as well, that information in game one can be critical. Uh, but I think you have to watch out, like you mentioned, that classic Firewater Grass call with the Rillaboom, Incineroar, and Kyogre. If you have that utility, which you do in Pokemon with Incineroar and Rillaboom, to keep switching your Pokemon, pivoting left, right, and center, having fake out, it can be really difficult for your opponent to adjust. And one wrong move, one wrong calculation here or there can really sway the way a match is going to go. Yeah, and with this matchup in particular, now that we're seeing the team side by side, I think that uh, you are comfortable running that slower form of play because as scary as Zacian is, there's only so much Zacian can do to Incineroar or Rillaboom, especially once those Intimidates start racking up. So I think both these trainers are going to have to be very careful. The Amoongus on Juan's side of the field will allow him some uh, some wiggle room when it comes to you know stopping the switch play you can certainly go for spore or rage powder to try and slow things down in your own right uh, but if Kyogre is able to find itself positioned across the field from the right Pokemon with the speed advantage uh, you know that those origin pulses or water spouts are going to be doing so much damage so let's see if uh, if that Kyogre is going to be able to find that spot yeah, well, it looks like for Bartosz, we've got the Zashin and that Reggie Alecki jumping out into the fray. And on the opposing side, Incineroar and the Zapdos. And Reggie Alecki looking very happy, but you've got to watch out for that intimidating Incineroar. We're going to be reducing the Intrepid Sword and now has fake out potential. Yeah, and we do know, thanks to watching from Bartosz's uh, perspective, that the Regieleki is holding a Focus Sash, so I think he's going to be forced to protect the Regieleki this turn. Uh, possibly switch out this Zacian. It is at neutral attack, which means it's still going to be doing a decent amount of damage, and if you want to make that switch regardless, going for a close combat into the Incineroar, when you think your opponent's going to go for the flinch on your Regieleki, uh, certainly would be a strong way to start the game off. Um, but it's really up to Bartosz, I think, to figure this out. I'm really curious to learn more about the Zapdos on Juan's side of the field, though, since, you know, a Heat Wave here could also be a great choice for him, as that would do some nice chip damage, as it looks like Bartosz just barely missed timing out. Yeah, taking every single second there to pick the correct move choices. Um, I think it's wise switching out that Zasha, though. You can reset that Intimidate, and you don't have to worry um, about where the fake out's going to go necessarily. Tapu Fini's not going to worry about it too much. Um, and Cineroar does go for the fake out into what was the Zashin into Tapu Fini. And Regieleki could go for a powerful Thunderbolt into the opposing Zapdos. Does over 50% here. Zapdos goes for a Thunderbolt. Did it predict the Tapu Fini coming in? Yes, it did. And is able to find its mark. So, unfortunately, Tapu Fini not switching in as safely as Bartosz would have Light, but thankfully it does have its berry there hidden away to be able to regain a little bit of HP and put itself in a slightly better position but that Zapdos was powerful that Zapdos is indeed powerful, and that is something to keep in mind. Fortunately for Bartosz, a second Thunderbolt should be enough to secure the knockout, and that just goes to show you how powerful Regieleki is <laughs> of its own right. And as a result, I think Juan needs to look at the two Pokemon he has in the back of his party and figure out how critical the Zapdos is to this strategy of stopping the Zacian on Bartosz's side of the field. I think that if you're okay with losing the Zapdos here, could be an indication of an Incineroar and a Kyogre on the other side of the field, but um, we'll need to find two opportunities to attack this Regieleki, which is going to be hard given how slow these Pokemon are in comparison. 
Well, Zapdos going for that Protect there does just burn that Thunderbolt from the um, Reggie Alecki. Incineroar, however, is going to have to take that Nature's Madness, taking it down to 50%. And it will, however, be able to get the Parting Shot off, however. And this is quite nice for that Incineroar, um, being able to just pivot out for Guan, allows him to bring the Incineroar back in later on to intimidate another day, particularly when you know that that Zashin is hiding around in the back. And if it gets that Intrepid Soul Boost, you have a way to counteract it. And bringing the Amoogus here onto the field, it's a Pokemon um, that can redirect away a few attacks and protect Protect that Zapdos a little bit more. Yeah, and thanks to the Misty Terrain from that Tapu Fini, Bartas doesn't have to worry about any sort of spores or the like because all of his Pokemon aren't going to be making contact with that terrain. So a good uh, uh, setup to p slow down the game a bit, you know, deal some chip damage to the Amoongus over the next couple of turns. I think what I'm curious to see is it, whether or not this Tapu Fini will stay in this turn. You know, Nature's Madness, if it's allowed to connect, does so much damage, it might actually put Pokemon like Amoongus within knockout range from a Thunderbolt on this Regieleki, and that's something, eh, maybe not quite yet, but something to keep in mind eventually as this game progresses. Well, every little bit of damage can add up, particularly when you're getting towards those end game situations. The Voltage, however, dealing significantly less than the Thunderbolt would have, but it does allow Bartosz the opportunity to pivot in this Zashin here, get that Intrepid Sword Beast up. You have to, of course, be careful of one having that Incineroar in the back for later, but Zapdos able to go for the Thunderbolt here into the Amoongus on Bartosz's side, able to take that very well. And now both of our players have these Amoonguses on the field to help out their partner Pokemon. You can see on Juan's side, the Pollen Puff going to be regaining some of the HP for that Zapdos that it took from the Thunderbolt earlier on in the game. And now both players have the opportunity to go for some Rage Powders. And the interesting thing about Bartosz's Amoongus in comparison is we just saw he does not have access to Pollen Puff. So that is also something that we're going to have to keep in mind as this game is moving forwards. You know, fortunately for uh, Bartosz, I think the Nature's Madness on his side of the field means that Pollen Puff won't be as critical since you'll always be doing half damage on one of your Pokemon. And plus, Zashin's just so powerful to begin with. Uh, I, I think that it's not something that you have to be too nervous about, but still, very good information for both these trainers at the start of this game. It looks like Incineroar will be coming back in with that Intimidate, though, to start off this next turn. Yeah, this is really nice. What Juan needs it for, really, when you know that Intrepid Sword Boost is up, it's now back down to neutral for that Zashin, not going to be able to deal as much power as before. Certainly not dealing any heavy hits this turn as it goes for that substitute, just gets it set up to protect itself for later on. Um, obviously, the spore coming out as well, that was some really good information that the Incineroar has those safety goggles, so it doesn't have to worry about taking any spores. Um, and it can take the Pollen Puff, though, to regain its HP. And that is great for Juan. Two turns, two Pollen Puffs, and two Pokemon almost back up to full health. Uh, and that is really what's amazing about these Amoongus that run Pollen Puff is a lot of times trainers will switch around in front of an Amoongus or protect or maybe use substitute to try and avoid being put to sleep. But in this case, you know, th there's enough pressure on the board from, you know, Zashin and the type of Pokemon that are on Juan's side of the field that he had to go for that substitute this turn and as a result Juan correctly calling that he would have the opportunity to heal up that Incineroar. Uh, it also means Incineroar can use moves like Flare Blitz a bit more comfortably knowing that you don't have to worry about putting your Pokemon uh, within knockout range from its own mm -hmm. recoil damage. Yeah, that's very true. And Reggie Alecki going to rejoin the field for one Amoongus as the other one switches out and brings in the Electric type on Juan's side of the field. So both the little mushrooms going to use their regenerator ability to regain a little bit of HP. As Zashin does go for that Behemoth Blade, going to be able to jump up into the air and find its target on that Zapdos that switched in. Not going to be dealing too much damage though. Zapdos is able to absorb that really well, um, as it's not very effective, of course. And Zashin actually going to be taking pretty much the same amount of damage with the Rocky Helmet. Interesting seeing the taunt being revealed there on the opposing Incineroar as well. That's some really good information for Bartosz to have going into the rest of the set, just locking down any of those status moves. And locking down the ability to redirect with Rage Powder as well, which, uh, judging by the fact that Bartosz brought both his Amoongus and his Tapu Fini, I don't think Spore was necessarily something that he wanted to uh, utilize as much as you would otherwise. Uh, so just good information to move forward. Uh, good to start anticipating the fact that this Amoongus will most likely be locked into attacking moves. But given that he does have access to Grass Knot on that Amoongus, I think that's okay. If he can find a way to get the Amoongus out next to the Kyogre, which we have to assume is in the back of Juan's party somewhere, uh, then the Amoongus is more than happy to attack in that situation. 
Yeah, and this is a nice play here, bringing in that Amoongus. The Thunderbolt coming down into what was the Incineroar. Amoongus going to be able to eat that up nice and easy as the Zashian does go for the close combat. And once again, Amoongus, the perfect Pokemon choice for Juan to switch in here, being able to eat up both those big damaging attacks. Incineroar would not have appreciated. I'm pretty sure the double up would have resulted in a KO there and Zashian having its defenses dropped for really no kind of trade-off here. And the interesting thing now is Zapdos is looking pretty safe to potentially switch out and allow that Kyogre in with Amoongus able to provide some respite. Or Amoongus could switch out as well if Juan decides that the Incineroar does want to come back in. You know, one close combat is enough to scare the Sashin away from the field and uh, get Amoongus' health back thanks to Regenerator. You know, I think Juan is playing a very slow, stally game here and correctly using Amoongus' more supportive properties in the form of Regenerator and Pollen Puff to make sure his Pokemon stay healthy. And uh, that looks like that Amoongus is going to enjoy some more health as it goes into the back of Juan's party. Yep, switches out and Incineroar rejoins the field, going to be able to intimidate and fake out another day here. But um, of course, Zashin able to hide away behind its substitute and avoid taking that minus one attack stat. As well, Regieleki wants to get in on out of here, going for that Volt Switch once again, allowing Bartosh to pivot into a Pokemon from the back. That Amoongus could come in, um, have that redirection again and just protect the Zashin a little bit more, could get out some disruption as well. And you can see the HP nice and healthy on that Amoongus as it rejoins the field. Zashin's been Helmuth Blade is going to be able to do a decent amount of damage, um, but going down into that Incineroar, however, not going to be as much as it would have been able to do previously, but constantly chipping away at these Pokemon can put our trainers in a really good endgame situation, and I love seeing this on the Zapdos, having Roost and that HP recovery utility. When you think about the fact that Quan already has the Amoongus with that Pollen Puff, having Roost as well just gives that Zapdos so much longevity in this match. I was gonna say, it's like Juan has access to like an entirely, like a fifth Pokemon with how much health he's recovered in this game. And that really is key in these slow switching matches. You know, you take a little bit of damage every time you switch your Pokemon around, but if you're able to heal that off, uh, if you're able to heal that up very easily, mm. it's almost like there's no uh, deterrent for continuing that playstyle. Yep, yeah, some more defensive switching here, going for the Amoongus back into the field for Juan, and it's going to have to take that close combat, but we've seen how little this can do, as Zapdos has detected on this turn, so just protecting itself from any damage. The, the Zashin, however, it's going to have its defenses dropped again, but it is still nice and safe behind this substitute. It hasn't been broken yet by Juan, and interestingly enough, Zapdos protecting very wise in the face of that spore. Yeah, I think this Zashin, as tempting as it is to switch it out, until that substitute is broken, you leave it on the field. The benefit to Juan's position right now is that the Zapdos is the only Pokemon that can attack. Uh, the Amoongus could mm -hmm. fall and puff the Zashin, but that's not going to do enough damage to knock it out, even after all those defensive drops from the close combat. So you just wait until that substitute's gone, then you go ahead and switch it out, and you make sure that you have the Amoongus to take that switch in too, because that is going to be uh, probably your best best bet for taking the minimum amount of damage in this situation. Well, Tapafini joining the field, sending the Misty Terrain, and can obviously apply pressure with something like a Nature's Madness in the following turn. Behemoth Blade going to come down into Amoongus, and that's oh. more like the damage we are used to seeing from Zashin. Does a huge, huge chunk to that Amoongus and puts it very vulnerable, but Zapdos going for the Thunderbolt doesn't find its mark on the Tapafini switch in like we saw earlier in the game, but it is enough to finally break that substitute on the Zashin, and this is so nice with that Misty Terrain, going to be stopping the spore from having any effect whatsoever. So Tapu Fini is certainly not in the best spot, staring down an Amoongus and a Zapdos, but really bringing in the the Misty Terrain was all Bartos needed that turn to stop the Spore. You know, I think that that was a great play, you know, anticipating there wouldn't be a Rage Powder in play, or, uh, I mean, even if there was, I think targeting the Amoongus with that Behemoth Blade uh, was the best move. You know, he tried to anticipate those Incineroar switches a couple of times already, and he kept calling it wrong, so... Uh, going for the consistent damage and making sure that, hey, even if I do miss that knockout, I'm not going to sleep is really the best call. Both these players have played this game so far with a lot of switches, trying to get the upper hand on whose Amoongus is going to be in play and in the advantageous situation. As one Amoongus joins the field in the case of Bartosh, the Amoongus on Juan's side is leaving with that Incineroar coming into play. And the Swahan now has the opportunity to go for a fake out the following turn, apply some Flare Blitz pressure potentially as well into that opposing Amoongus that is certainly causing a lot of problems. Zapdos going for the Thunderbolt though, will go into the Regieleki, breaking I believe the Focus Sash on that particular item but not dealing a huge amount of damage. And Reg Lucky, we know can apply lots going forward. We've seen how much it can deal to that Zapdos, but it has to watch out for Fake Out. 
It has to watch out for fake out, and I think more importantly, uh, Bartos just has to be careful about this Incineroar in general. I think it's very tempting to go for the attack here, since we've seen Reggie Lucky be able to do enough damage to pick up that knockout easily. And Incineroar is not in a position where it could be healed by its partner Pokemon. You know, Zapdos' Roost only works for it, so I think if you anticipate that the Incineroar is going to go for that fake out, you just wait a turn and hope that you'll be able to connect an attack the next turn when the Incineroar will still be as vulnerable. But with Amoongus on the field now, I don't think that's quite the case. Really nice protect here from Bartosz, just going to save itself from the fake out. Amoongus goes for Spore, but it goes down into the Amoongus switch on the hand side. And I mean, that would have been really nice for Bartosz being able to spore the flying type Pokemon so the Misty Terrain doesn't come into effect. But Amoongus isn't going to worry about that terrain or not. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, yes, it's not going to accomplish too much in that turn, but I think the way Bartos is playing right now is he's trying to keep that attacking move a secret, um, just so that if there is the Kyogre in the back, because we've only seen three Pokemon from Juan, even though we've been switching, you know, left and right, up and down for the entirety of this mm -hmm. match. Um, you know, once that Kyogre is on the field, you really want that Grass Knot to come as a surprise. So keeping that mystery alive is really key to Bartos the strategy as like you said Lou both these trainers keep switching around trying to find that advantage they're looking for Moongus just goes for that Rage Powder, directing in the Volt Switch, allowing the pivot from the Regieleki. And you can see the regenerator ability really helped up that Amoongus. Uh, we saw how dwindled its HP was previously, and you can see again that Bartosz is constantly chipping away at it. Juan's going to need to find a way to switch Amoongus out to, you know, regain some HP again, or else it's going to be KO'd very shortly. Um, as Bartosz brings his own um, his own Amoongus, sorry, into the field, as Incineroar goes for the Flare Blitz. Finding its mark on Tapu Fini, not on the switch in into the Amoongus, I think Juan would have really 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 like to see yeah i was wondering for a second if that flare blitz was going to target the regieleki spot it's honestly mm -hmm. not the worst move against regieleki just because regieleki is so frail but you know bringing tapu fini down within ko range of another attack especially one coming from a zapdos will be key moving forwards but uh still just these two trainers trying to find that first knockout trying to find the advantage in this game and um you know i think we're gonna see another switch with amoongus leaving the field this turn but it looks like everybody stays in for the first time i think okay <laughs> Yeah, for once, the Amoongus is here to stay. Incineroar, however, is not. It's able to survive. I believe that was the Moonblast coming out from the Tapu Fini, um, and is able to go for the parting shot and go back to its trainer here, um, allowing Juan another opportunity to pivot in a Pokemon from the back and apply some offensive pressure. Something like the Zapdos here can certainly apply some good electric-type damage to that Tapu Fini, but with the Amoongus on the field, that's going to cause a little bit of disruption. I wonder if we possibly might even see the fourth and final Pokemon on Juan's side of the field. Um, it is is indeed going to be that Kyogre finally revealing itself and jumping into the fray and this is where Kyogre can do some really good stuff we don't know what the item is on it it's still information that has to be determined um, but you know it could go for something like an ice beam um, try and deal some good damage to that opposing um, yeah, Mamoonga, or you could just go for the good old um, water type moves with something like a water spout deals some good damage. But then Amoongus on Bartosh's side, you need to find a way to deal with it or it is going to spoil you. There's no misty terrain. Yeah, I, I like how uh, the Amoongus just immediately locked into Spore on that Kyogre. You know, I think Bartosh recognizing that once Kyogre's gone, this game will slowly turn to his favor but with that protect it gives Juan's Amoongus the opportunity to uh, Spore himself. Yeah, that's exactly what we see happening. Really nice protect there on the Kyogre. I think a lot of the time we're used to seeing it running a Scarf variant, so you might think it's very safe that it can't protect, you could go into it. But both trainers being able to kind of capitalize on the opportunity, but Quan, I think, coming out advantageous there with the protect. No sleep on one side of the field, and Tapu Fini is taking a nap. But Bartosz, again, locking into that Spore and just recognizing that Kyogre is either going to switch out or it's going to be put to sleep. Unless he pivots in the Incineroar, who we've seen earlier, is holding the safety goggles. So if Tapu Fini is able to find a quick wake up, you know, not this turn as it's guaranteed to stay asleep, but maybe the next turn, uh, you know, that is a knockout that Tapu Fini can take. So we'll just have to see what how this game unfolds and how many turns we're going to see some sleep on the field.
Yeah, and this is the nice thing about the team synergy. The Pollen Puff can go into that Incineroar and regain its HP, which it desperately needed. It was really sort of one gust of wind from being KO'd there. Um, and it gives now find the opportunity with Tappy Finney sleeping to possibly even switch out um, that Amoongus a little bit, do a little bit of um, HP recovery in this situation. But you have to worry about maybe the Pokemon switching in being caught in a spore. Um, but if it was something like the Zapdos that maybe you wouldn't mind so much, you could bring your Amoongus back in later and have it paired up with the Kyogre perhaps. Um, but we're going to see a few switches coming up. Bartosz is going to take away the Napping Tappy Finny and bring in the Reggie Alecky as Amoongus just goes for a Protect. It does. And I think the other thing I'm curious to see is what this Incineroar locked into uh, was Taunt. So trying to slow things down or stop this Amoongus from going for those spores entirely. Well, Juan's own Amoongus gets that Incineroar back up to full health. I believe that is the sixth Pokemon that Juan's added to his <laughs> side of the field. But something more importantly to call out, time is ticking on. And it looks like Bartos only has about 30 seconds left on on his overall timer if he lets that run out he will lose this game so yet another yet another win condition as well with the two minutes left in this game yeah, the clock is running down. The uh, Zapdos is going to take a huge amount of damage from that Thunderbolt, but like you said, a few protects here or there could really decide out this match. Incineroar is going to go for the switch once again with a parting shot, just going to go back to its Pokeball, and leaves Juan the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon here from the back. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see Juan possibly taking a little bit of time with this, but instead we're going to see Kyogre join the field nice and early here as Amoongus goes for the Spore, finding its mark on that Zapdos. Um, of course, things can look a little bit um, different difficult here with the Kyogre on the field, but we know that Kyogre can protect, so it doesn't have to worry potentially about taking an electric type moves from this Regieleki. And at this point in time, I believe Juan's Pokemon have more health on the field than Bartos's. So going for those protects and stalling out the last two minutes of this game, assuming there is no knockout on either side of the field, is a way that Juan can secure his win condition. Yeah, that's true. They have all got all four Pokemon remaining. It was something I just missed there for a second. Um, Amoongus is going to retreat for Bartosh, bringing in the Zashin, because you want your Amoongus to get as healthy as possible to get that HP bar nice and high. And of course, now the Regioleki can apply a lot of pressure um, to that opposing Kyogre with an electric type move such as the Thunderbolt. Oh. And it does indeed find its mark, but Kyogre, very, very bulky here, does survive, but does get paralyzed. But with the clock ticking away, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Water Spout not going to be dealing as much damage, but it actually picks up the KO against Reggie Alecki. And that is the KO Juan needed to secure the win in this game. There are only 20 seconds left on the game timer, even less than that now. All Juan has to do is let that timer tick out before locking in his last move. And, you know, seeing that Bartos still has 20 seconds on his time, and then, of course, the 40 seconds on move time as well, you know that timer is going to be hitting zero, and Juan will be taking game one in this exciting set all the way down to the wire on this one yeah that was incredibly intense that whole game one obviously going down to the wire those games are long they're very very sort of mentally taxing as well on our players um and on Gimli you can see he's still sleeping um he I will be honest he's kind of falling off the desk a little bit as you can see but you know he's still with us and hopefully you're still with us in this set as well. Um, I think the thing that's so interesting about this match is that it really does come down to a lot of those ball positions. We saw constantly our players switching things up, making sure they were rotating Pokemon in and out. And I think one slip up here or there or one critical hit could really have changed the outcome of this match. Yeah, and it's honestly surprising to me that we went through so many turns without a critical hit or a paralysis or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever other shenanigans Pokemon has an offer for us. So going into this game, too, I don't see why we'd be seeing this game pick up in speed. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of this slow play again because, you know, looking at the Pokemon that weren't brought to the game, to the previous game, uh, Mimikyu, Rillaboom, Landorus, and I believe the uh, Insane. Cineroar on Bartos's side of the field, mm -hmm. um, it, they're not necessarily going to offer any magical techs or any magical solutions that would speed up this game. I think going into this game too, you have to assume that you'll be seeing the same Pokemon, you'll have to be assuming you'll be seeing the same switches, and then you just have to figure out, who do I prioritize the knockouts on? I think in mm -hmm. Bartos's case, I, he should have gone a little bit harder into that Amoongus. I, I thought it was a little bit interesting that Amoongus was given so many opportunities 
opportunities to go for those pollen puffs. Um, and as much as you want to switch yourself in that situation, I think you just have to make the play to deal damage on the Amoongus and then sort of take whatever you can get if that Amoongus does switch out on the opposing side of the field. Uh, yeah. I work. Oh, go for it. Oh, no, no, sorry. I was just going to say, all the healing on Juan's side really did allow that match to keep going. It just stopped Bartosz from picking up KOs. Exactly. And if you're on Juan's side of the field, I think you try and just stick to that game plan as much as possible. Even if your Amoongus is removed earlier on in the match, you still have the Roost on the Zapdos. We have this bulky Kyogre who can, mm. who can make the Thunderbolt a solid two-hit knockout. Um, that's not something you normally see from Kyogre. It's definitely <laughs> an indication of how it's been trained. Uh, and you just use that bulk to your advantage and play to knowing that your one of your win cons is considerably just letting that timer hit zero. Yeah, if I hadn't seen a protect, I would have thought, oh, that's an assault vest, but we Me know too. that's impossible. It just, it's a very bulky Kyogre, and it's joining us on the field straight away here, paired up with the Incineral for Fan, whereas on the opposing side for Bartosz, it's Regieleki once again with that Zashin, and I think it was interesting in game one, Gabby, that both the restricted Pokemon actually didn't play a very big part in the match at all. They didn't, and I think that Juan's in a position right now in this game, too, to immediately change that, assuming that Kyogre has access to maybe an Origin Pulse or a Scald in addition to the Water Spout we saw in Game 1. Go for the Fake Out onto the Regieleki, go for an attack on the Zacian. Worst case scenario, your opponent double protects and nothing happens this turn and you get to figure out what to do next turn. But uh, if left unchecked, that Kyogre could get a surprise knock out which would really speed things up already but Juan making a bold prediction here not going for the fake out instead starting the game off with a switch I love this play because if your opponent double protects they've burnt their protects and then hey you've got another fake out Pokemon on the field for the next turn um, we see the Regieleki protect that is one is Bartosz going to lock in the second one yes he is so for Juan here you've got a Pokemon that can go for fake out again and then you could go for that water spout that you see the Kyogre's already gone for just on the off chance um, and it does just put him in such a nice offensive pressure certainly a change of pace from what we saw in game one and the worst part, I think, for Bartosh is that the Zacian, it, it can't protect anymore. It could go for a substitute, and but it'll still be taking a little bit of damage, and that substitute won't be sticking. Or if Bartosh decides to switch out the Zacian, whatever Pokemon comes in is going to be taking a lot of damage from Kyogre's Water Spout. And I think that if you're in his position, you have to be really mindful of what Pokemon switches in. Fortunately, since we are watching from his perspective, we know that Tapu Fini and Amoongus are the Pokemon of choice, which will both resist the Water Spout. But still, I, I don't think either of those Pokemon necessarily want to be staring down the Rillaboom. So a tough call for Bartosh to make and Juan uh, in a great position to get the first knockout of the game. I really like this as well. No fake out, just goes for the Grassy Glide, gets a little bit of chip onto that opposing Zashin. Of course, without a Choice Scarf, then the Zashin is going to be able to go first here. We'll be able to deal a decent chunk to that Kyogre, but the bulk really, really paying off. My one question is, with the bulk investment, how much is the sort of physical or special attacking presence of that Kyogre going to do? And I think it just answered me with how much it did to that opposing Zashin. does a huge chunk of damage, but I think it is still, particularly with the recovery, out of range of a Grassy Glide trying to pick up a KO against it. It's going to need some more water type damage coming out from that Kyogre to be able to seal it up. Yeah, I don't even think a critical hit on Grassy Glide would be enough to knock out that Zacian. So great information. The Kyogre, uh, definitely bulky in terms of its health, in terms of its defenses, but not as trained in special attack as some of the other Kyogre we've seen. Uh, great news for Amoongus, though, because that means if Kyogre does have access to Ice Beam to do some super effective damage to it, chances are it will be able to attack, barring something like a freeze or a critical hit. And that Grass Knot, is going to guarantee a knockout at this point. Kyogre is such a heavy Pokemon. I think mm. that even with the added bulk investment, it's still going to do enough damage. But uh, we'll have to see what Bartosh uh, prioritizes this turn as it looks like Juan is set to go on the offensive once again. 
Well, it's going to be a protect from the Zashin, but Amoongus is going to fall victim to having the Cobra Berry knocked off from that Rillaboom oh. as Kyogre does go for the Ice Beam. Having the speed advantage here has been critical for one, knowing that that Zashin was likely going to protect. And even if it did go for a Nulla Behemoth Blade, Kyogre was going to be able to survive that. And Ice Beam is not affected by how much HP you have. So the double up just removes that Amoongus from play. And now, Juan, if we look at the situation from game one and the amount of disruption that Amoongus called, it certainly puts him in a better position than... Um, um, he was in game one when Amoogus was on the field. Also gives him the Pokemon advantage if we were to get down to timer, but uh, given the fact that the Zacian has already taken so much damage, it cannot comfortably set up a substitute at this point in time. I think that Bartosh is in a position where he will be losing the Zacian if he doesn't switch it out this turn. Uh, maybe you're okay with losing the Zacian. Um, Tapu Fini can certainly do damage with Nature's Madness and Moonblast, and that's something you do have available to you, but uh, it's still a very tough spot to be in. Juan, on the other hand, Grassy Glide into the Regieleki plus another spread attack on that Kyogre should be enough damage to knock it out as it is the uh, more, one of the more weaker I think uh, Hoenn Golem Pokemon, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just got to play around that if you're Bartosh, know that you have to be very careful and not lose another Pokemon to give your opponent another advantage. Yeah, this is certainly difficult here for Balto. Trying to go for the Volt Switch and remove itself from the field, but the Protect from Kyogre going to deny that. And Zashin just able, oh. with good math calculations, to go for a substitute there. As Riddaboom does just go for the U-turn, breaking the Focus Sash on that opposing Regieleki. And if you're Hanna, you could possibly bring in that Incineroar to try and go for a Fake Out here. But I think it's wise from Balto here, being able to protect your Zashin from behind the substitute. Doesn't have to worry about the Intimidate coming in. It doesn't, and it also is guaranteed to survive uh, damage from Kyogre for one turn. You know, Fake Out uh, won't be enough damage to break Substitute, and Incineroar mm. doesn't have access uh, to any other priority moves. And honestly, seeing how much damage the Grassy Glide did from Juan into that uh, Zacian earlier on in this game, it's possible that that might not be enough to break subs either, so really good uh, c mental calculation there realizing mm -hmm. that you do indeed have enough health to get that substitute up and mm -hmm. uh, gives Zashin the opportunity to try and get a quick KO here to even up the score. I, I think that you have to prioritize the close combat in that regard. Uh, just connect it with the Incineroar. If, if the switch is into Rillaboom, then Rillaboom's still going to be taking a lot of damage from that and certainly more damage than it would from a Behemoth Blade. And the fact that Regieleki is still on the field is enough pressure on its own to keep threatening that Kyogre. So uh, really the Incineroar spot is your best shot at tying up this game. Yeah, I think you're right. Incineroar is such a good utility Pokemon. If you can remove it, it's going to be great for Bartosh. Fake Out goes to protect off the Regieleki. However, it's still happy and bouncing away in this game too. As Ashen does go for the close combat onto the opposing Incineroar, it's not going to be able to pick up a KO against it, but does certainly put it in a very precarious situation. And it gives Regieleki a couple of options um, into this next turn as well. Kyogre, however, is going to go for the Water Spout. Um, not going to be able to find its mark, of course, on Regieleki, but will be able to go down onto that Zashin. Um, and I believe break the substitute on it. Yeah, so this Regieleki now has its choice. It can deal enough damage to the Incineroar to try and pick up a knockout. It can attack into that Kyogre. Or alternatively, I think Bartosh can go for an attack from the Zacian into the Incineroar and try again and catch a Pokemon on the switch. You know, I, I think that he does still have to be careful about the Zacian because, you know, it is at such low health. But without Grassy Terrain and really without his own way of healing that Zacian up, you just have to accept the fact that it, the game is going to come down to Regieleki and your Tapu Fini, and as a result, you need to try and find the best case scenario for both those Pokemon. Uh, the one thing that Tapu Fini is really going to struggle with, I think, in this matchup is, and again, we know this, but Juan doesn't, it doesn't have access to Muddy Water or any Water-type attacks. It's going to be forced to rely on Moonblast for damage, and uh, that is something to keep in mind when it comes to targeting this turn, since Incineroar is going to be a really difficult knockout in that situation. Yeah, and unfortunately for Regieleki, it goes for the Electro Web, targeting both the opposing Pokemon, uh, but is not able to find its mark on that opposing Kyogre, and it would have done a good amount of damage. Not too much, as we know how bulky the Kyogre is, but every little bit helps in the face of a potential Water Spell. But that's not the move choice for this Kyogre. It's just gone straight for the Skull, making sure to guarantee the KO against that opposing Zashin here. Um, and whatever Pokemon would have switched in from the back,
Um, we know it's that Tappy Finney. I think Skull would have still done a decent amount, but you've got to watch out as well. There's no rain on the field anymore to boost up the moves of that Kyogre, but it is still sitting at a huge amount of HP. And more importantly, Juan does have the opportunity to switch it out this turn mm -hmm. if he decides that he wants to get that weather back. Um, I think especially when you're staring down Reggie Alecki, uh, you take the slower play, you know, you protect or you switch or uh, you otherwise ensure that Kyogre will be safe as Zapdos does that remaining amount of damage to pick up the knockout. And then from there, Tapu Fini is an easy knockout. But as we see Bartosh lock in that forfeit, I don't think he had any Pokemon on his side of the field to uh, go to really handle the Rillaboom, who was the last Pokemon in Juan's uh, team and uh, would have been able to use Grassy Glide to some really great success against both the Regieleki and the Tapu Fini. Yeah, I mean, I think Gimli is the perfect metaphor right now. Was taking a nice kind of nap in that first long game one that we had, but then has woken up and is quite literally cleaning up this particular game two. And that's what we saw Juan do coming into game two with a lot more defensive pressure, a lot more, you know, heavy hitting straight away from the beginning and was able to claim victory. So a really nice change of pace in that particular match. And it did show kind of the nice versatile options of that team. It has the longevity and the bulk to be able to last those long gruel matches of kind of games, but then also can pack a really heavy punch when needed. And I think you get that extra bulk from the Amoongus and the Zapdos pick in particular. You know, Rillaboom and Incineroar are certainly bulky Pokemon as well, but they're common enough that they're on a lot of teams. And I feel like if you're in a Rillaboom versus Rillaboom situation or an Incineroar versus Incineroar situation, you're going to sort of match your opponent for the most part. But by having the Amoongus and the Zapdos as well, I think that you can... Um, you know, you can just make your team that much more bulky and make it that much more difficult to take down. So congratulations, Juan. Just a very well-played game. Uh, loved the adjustments from sort of the typical Kyogre teams that we see right now and just really using that bulk to his advantage. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, I think that was, am I right in remembering that was Argentina's first win in their matchup against Poland? It was, and there still are many matches to be played, so it really could be anybody's game at this point. It certainly could be. And while Gimli is just giving himself a really good bath, I think that is a nice way to close out today's stream. It's been a fantastic set of four phenomenal matches. We've had quite a few kind of go to that game three. We've had some nice long matches, some very quick, heavy hitting games in particular, but all of them have been amazing. And it's been phenomenal to cast with yourself and Sierra and of course Gimli as well. Yeah, it's really been a treat to jump on the mic again with you, Lou, with Gimli, and with Sierra as well. So thank you all so much for watching at home. Thanks again to Elgato for uh, making the World Cup of VGC possible this year. Um, it's really been an exciting tournament. And that's not all the VGC action we have. You know, we'll be live again tomorrow uh, here over at the Victory Road channel at the same time, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm not sure what that translates for you, Lou, but uh, I'm sure it's a good time <laughs> yeah i'll definitely be hanging out and that's the lovely thing if you miss the streams you can always catch up on all of victory roads matches on their youtube as well so there's lots of content to check out but i think we will bid goodbye for today and catch you guys tomorrow for some more amazing world cup pokemon action